So it's day five of lockdown here in Auckland and the city is still shut. It's eerily quiet wherever you go. Even though there are a few more people wandering up and down here in the afternoon, at this time in the day you'd normally expect all these bars to be open and for it to be pretty busy. But even though the city's shut, there's still been a fair bit going on with the two teams as we get closer and closer to what we hope is going to be the first day of racing on Wednesday the 10th of March. Now the good news is, is that Gilles Martin Roger, that famous and expert French photographer, has been camped out on the beach, presumably in isolation, looking at what's been going on out on the Horaki Gulf. But it's not just Gilles that's been looking out there either. Harry from Sail Chaser has also had a keen eye trained out on the water to see what's going on. So this time we've got quite a bit of our own reconnaissance. Now over the last few days the Kiwis appear to have been trying out a few new sails. They've been trying out some smaller jibs. They've also got a, a cut down main sail which you can see if you look down the leech of the sail, particularly down at the bottom you can see where the leech has been cut away. But perhaps most interestingly, they've been trying out a Code Zero. Now in December, they were sailing around with a Code Zero back then, but this one's very different. This one looks like it's got much more of a high clue. They set it with the jib up as well, and they seem to sail in displacement mode with it. So whether it's a super light air sail, or whether they're just trying to spook the opposition, I don't really know, but it's interesting to see them using it. When the breeze picked up over the last couple of days, they were out there yet again and doing some practice starts. They were using their chase boats as the, as the opposition and it was very interesting to see the number of different entries that they did into the start box, particularly interesting to see the range of different manoeuvres that they did as well. And I suppose a couple of things really stood out. One was the variety of those manoeuvres and also the speed with which they're throwing the boat around now. But there's something else that really stands out. Look at how there's no crew moving from side to side. Apparently they're now sailing or at least experimenting with the idea of having two helmsmen. Well, well, well. Who's the other one? Glenn Ashby. We think he's on the port side but I'm not absolutely sure about that. But I think it does go to show two things in particular. One is how they've upped the ante when it comes to throwing the boat around the start box. The other is the fact that they've spent so much time practicing the pre-starts. We've been saying for some time that maybe one of the areas that they're vulnerable in is indeed the starts. They seem to be addressing that. Now, another interesting point is that look who's in the background, Luna Rossa. They've been out training as well and no doubt watching very carefully and seeing what the Kiwis are up to. Of course it works both ways, I'm sure they're both watching each other intently. Now when it comes to Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli, we really don't know that much about them. Yet again they're playing their cards very close to their chests and it's difficult to really see any differences in the setup of the boat. However, a little video popped up the other day on Instagram which revealed far more than certainly I was expecting. It showed team boss Max Serena giving tour of the base, something that very few people have been able to go and see for themselves. And there's a couple of things that stand out. For a start, the foils. Look at those flap sections on their foils. You can actually see the configuration of the foil and indeed the size of the foils off the back of the main wing coming out, plus the intersection in between. It's a very sleek, low drag looking connection down there. To me, and without being able to measure anything, it looks like a lower aspect ratio foil than that of the Kiwis. In other words, it's a bit fatter at the root. The Kiwi foil is very slender all the way along its length. Of course, the other thing that defines a difference between these two sets of foils is that Luna Rossa has anhedral, so downward slope on their foils, whereas the Kiwi foil is absolutely dead flat across the bottom. Now, you could argue that there's nothing particularly new in this, and perhaps there isn't, but it was, I think, pretty revealing to actually see those foils close up in the yard, particularly because in the background, 
there's a, another set of foils and cant arms lurking in the corner over there. But the biggest thing of all was finally to see what a number of us have suspected all along, and that is, is that Lunarossa has a boom under the deck. It's an ingenious solution. They've basically got a long conventional boom that runs underneath the deck and that deck bit that we see in the middle with all the square red patterns on top that's essentially just a fairing that sits over the top. Now the significance of this boom is it means that they can control the clue of the mainsail much more accurately than if it's floating in air and they have to control it with lines which is how we believe the Kiwis control their mainsail. It also means that the Italian main can come, as we know, all the way down onto the deck and to be beautifully sealed along the bottom. Plus, it reveals where they keep their hydraulics for controlling the outhaul and the other controls that they have over the mainsail. And this appears to be on the boom itself. So the whole package rotates like you would an ordinary boom, but that's where it is. I'm surprised that Max Serena is happy for those images to be in the public domain, assuming that is, he is. But they are, they're there, you can find them yourself. So then the next question is, when was that video shot? Well, we know that it was posted on the 19th of February, which interestingly was the Friday before the final weekend of the Prada Cup, the weekend that they won the trophy. That's a strange time to post a video like that. But the other significant thing about the timing of that posting is that it was before Declaration Day, which, as we know, was this uh, Monday, the 1st of March. So there's nothing to say that the boat still looks like it did in that Instagram video. But let's face it, it's pretty unlikely that they would have changed the boom. And in many ways, you could argue that teams are less likely now to make big changes because they'd risk compromising the developments that they've made along the line. So I'm not surprised to see the emphasis going on crew work and sail handling rather than major developments on kit. Now, here's a final thought. Until a couple of hours ago, it was absolutely chucking it down here. Yes, I know your heart bleeds, but there you have it. It was raining yesterday as well, and it wasn't too smart the day before that. But teams were out practicing in the rain. So what, you might say? Well, when was the last time you stuck your head out of the car window while you're driving along at 50 mile an hour in the pouring rain and tried to give directions to the driver? Food for thought, eh? Thank you.